Hi there traders, this is Steve Miley for FX Explained and again another one of our regular macro watch features in here. This is uh, looking back on the uh, last week and going into the week commencing the 16th of September 2019. So we're going to start off by looking at some articles in here from Reuters in here, what's been going on. So uh, the breaking news over the weekend were these attacks on the Saudi uh, facilities threatening spare oil capacity, likely going to see a spike higher in oil um, going into Monday morning's open and then what we're likely to see as well is um, potentially some fresh concerns about the stability in the Middle East given that the US are pointing the finger currently at Iran regarding these attacks on these Saudi facilities. So not only is the oil dis um, supply disrupted, which are going to see the, the price of oil push higher, but also increasing Middle East tensions. The other, um, so that's going to be probably pr um, negative for overall riskier assets, negative for global growth, um, but obviously positive for the oil price. Uh, if we look elsewhere though, um, everything from last week was fairly positive. We had a more of a shift to a risk on mode. Um, first of all, um, early in the re week, Trump considering an interim trade deal with China. Also, we saw a delay in some of the tariffs that were due to go on on the 1st of October being delayed back to the middle of October by two weeks um, from the US side. And then also China announced that tariff and exemptions for farm products, including soybeans and pork. Um, so th that's adding to um, already 16 types of product exempted. So all of that is seen as a positive um, alongside the potential for this interim trade deal between the US and China. And that's pushed equity markets higher again, global equity markets pushing higher on the back of that through uh, the early part of last week. We also had the, the key focus going into last week was the ECB, the European Central Bank, um, and they cut interest rates as anticipated, the deposit rate from minus 0.4 to minus 0.0 as expected. They also then um, introduced a tiering system, tiering system um, where negative rates would not apply to a significant proportion of deposit held by banks at the ECB, which could mean that liquidity may actually be drained from the banking system. Um, net net, and um, they also sorry um, introduced another round of quantitative easing. Um, net net, the impact was for actually bond markets to sell off to go to higher, not lower yields, and also for the euro to end up strengthening. So even though this is more dovish shift, um, the overall impact on markets was really to more of a more hawkish tone. Although equity markets seem to like it, so stock markets also pushed higher. Turning our attention to the UK in here, we have had some optimism at the end of the week regarding um, some progress potentially on the Irish backstop, which saw the pound shift significantly higher. And this was also on the back of the Scottish court ruling um, that the proroguing of Parliament was unlawful. That's going to go to the Supreme Court this week, and that will be in the UK, and that will be watched um, very intensely. Again, that's a negative for the, the, the Boris Johnson government, and the negative for the Boris Johnson government is seen as a positive for the pound given that um, it makes a no deal Brexit more unlikely. So all of that, again, helping the risk on mode um, that we've seen. So kind of in summary there, what we've seen over the last week is more of a shift to a risk on mode. US and China coming together slightly in here. ECB adding more liquidity and then also um, Brexit no deal further um, from a likelihood at the end of October. But we have had that more negative theme from the attacks on Saudi Arabia. Let's take a look at the week going ahead. Obviously, we're looking at that. Um, UK, the UK Supreme Court, we're monitoring the situation in the Middle East. We're monitoring the US and China situation regarding trade. What do we have on the data front, though? Well, to kick off the week here on the 16th, on Monday, industrial production and retail sales are going to be the big focus from China. And then we move on. We've got um, the actual Reserve Bank of Australia, uh, minute meeting minutes on the on the 17th. Um, and then we also get a German ZEW survey and then US industrial production on Tuesday, the 17th. Moving through on to Wednesday, the focus moves on to UK inflation report in here, UK CPI data. But we also then get um, on Wednesday, Eurozone CPI in here, Canadian CPI, and then most importantly, the first of the central banks we have. So um, the Fed re um, Reserve Fed Reserve meeting um, where an interest rate cut is kind of expected in here. Um, we get that on, um, on Wednesday evening, moving through into Thursday, Australian employment report. And then we get our next two central bank meetings. We get both the Bank of Japan and the Bank of England on Thursday. And then we end up the week with German CPI. Um, on, on uh, Friday the 20th, German CPI alongside um, uh, Fed Rosengreen is speaking on Friday. But the big focus going into this week, clearly going to be the Fed. And then after that, we have the Bank of Japan and the Bank of England meetings on Thursday.
This has been Steve Miley, the market chart is on behalf of FX Explained with another Macro Watch. Join us again next time and have a great trading week. So traders, don't forget to catch us on the next FX Explained Macro Watch and all the great content on fxexplained.co.uk.